So we've learned what a proposition is. It's a statement that's true or false. We've learned about operators that we can use with propositions. Well, I guess before we learned about operators, we learned that we could represent a proposition with a variable, just P or Q, something to represent it so it's simple to write down in an expression. And then we learned about operators, where we can put a, where we can put multiple propositions together with an operator, the and operator, the or operator, the not operator, and the conditional operators. And so we learned about these operators. And using propositional variables and these operations, we could write compound propositions or expressions that had multiple variables and used multiple operators and could be combined in a variety of ways. And now uh, we're going to see some of the laws that apply to those because now that we have propositions and we have this concept of logical equivalency, that one that one proposition can be one compound proposition can be equivalent to another um, compound proposition. So we have all these concepts together, and now we can do manipulation. So we can move things around, we can swap how things are, and we can manipulate these expressions. This is very similar to being able to manipulate um, formulas in algebra, right? Well, when we do that, there are certain laws about what we can and cannot do. And there's a bunch of them. So here's a bunch of those laws that we can use. And some of them you're going to see are very are, are actually the same as what we use in algebra. And some of them are kind of new. So let's walk through these kind of one at a time and just talk about them. So if we have P or P, it turns out that that just is equivalent to P. Now, when we have two that are equivalent, we can just replace it. So if we ever have P or P in an expression, we can replace it with P. And that's what these laws allow us to do. They allow us to manipulate expressions for our purposes. So we might be manipulating them because we want to simplify them. Um, because we want to, them to fit in a certain way, because we want to prove equivalency. Lots of reasons that we might want to manipulate these expressions. And if we ever have P and P, then that results in P as well. Now, it could be any other variable. Like, it just doesn't have to be P. It could be Q. It could be R. Any variable ORD with itself, so any proposition ORD with itself, is just that proposition itself. Associative laws said if you have a series of OR operations, it doesn't matter what order you do them in. So you can move the parentheses around to do them in whatever order works best for the situation. Same with AND. If you have a series of ANDs, then you can change which order they're done in. Now be careful, that doesn't mean if you have a mixture of OR and AND. Um, those are different order of operations. But it's only when you have more than one OR operation, doesn't matter the order. If you have more than one AND operation, it doesn't matter the order. Commutative, commutative laws, that just says if you have an OR operation, it doesn't matter what order they're in. So P or Q is the same as Q or P, so you can swap the order on either side of an OR operation, or you can swap the order on either side of an AND operation. Distributed, now this is when you can distribute an and operation or an or operation. So here we have P or, and then in parentheses, Q and R. So we can distribute that P or into um, the Q and R. And notice when you distribute it, that you take the P and, and put it with the Q, right there, you're, you take that P and and put it with the Q. You, I mean, or, sorry, you also take the P or and distribute it to the R. And then you keep the and in between. So you're just really distributing it inside the parentheses. So here we'll do it again on the second one. It's P and, and we're distributing this P and, and you distribute it so the P and goes with Q, the first variable, and you keep the OR operation that's inside those parentheses, and you distribute the P and to the other variable inside the parentheses. So you're distributing it inside the parentheses. The identity laws say that if you ever or anything with false, you just get itself back out. And if you and it with true, 
you get it back with itself. And that just reflects how or works, right? So you or with a false, no matter what you or with a false, it is it said you order a true with it, it's true. If you order a, if you or and a false with it, you get false. So you just get itself. When you and with true, again, you get yourself. So if you have true and true, you get true. If you have false and true, you get false. So and or, or you turn out the same. Now dominion, has to do with, boy, you and anything with faults and the result is false. And that's really what this is saying. Where the second one is saying, if you or anything with true, you end up with true. So that's just the power of false and true. When And notice that the false is powerful when it's the and operation, and the true is powerful when it's the or operation. Double negation law means you not, not, you come out with the same result. You do it twice, you, know, you take false, you not it, you get true, you not it again, you're back to false. Complement laws. So this one is say, if you and P and not P together, you're going to get false, no matter, in all cases. And if you take P or not P, you're going to get true. And, and so that's the complement laws. And also on this one that shows that not true is false and not false is true. So those are things that we really know for sure the not true and not false. But when you and P and not P, you all get false. And when you or P and not P, you get true. De Morgan's law. Now we've talked about De Morgan's law, but let's talk about it again. And this is when you have P or Q and you not it. So let's take P or Q and take the negation of that. What you end up with is not P and not Q. This is a different way to write it. These are logically equivalent. So you can write it either way, go whichever direction you want. If you have P and Q and you take the negation of P and Q, you end up with not P or not Q. And those are De Morgan's laws. Absorption laws is if you have P or, and then in parentheses you have P and Q, you actually end up with P again. So this is quite a simplification. So if you ever end up with this kind of combination, you know that you can just replace it with a P. If you have P and P or Q, then you end up with P as well. Conditional identities. So this is P implies Q, right? If P, then Q. And at something that's logically equivalent to, with that is not P or Q. So you can write this in, you know, do you want to use the not and the or operators or do you want to use the conditional operator? And two different ways to write it. Now, the biconditional P if and only if Q is a little bit more complex, right? It means P implies Q and Q implies P. So those are the laws of propositional logic.